I wanted to do a quick video on two books that were released this year commemorating the 40th anniversary of John Lennon's death. John Lennon, 1980, The Last Years in the Life by Kevin Womack, and then The Last Days of John Lennon, which was, it's credited to James Patterson with Casey Sherman and Dave Wedge. I tend to think that Casey Sherman and Dave Wedge did most of the writing on this particular book. This book is fantastic. It takes you back to December of 1979, and it goes month by month through the last year of John's life. It talks about how he overcame his writer's block, some of the traveling that he did, what his thoughts were about his fellow Beatles, the songwriting process for Double Fantasy, the recording process, and just all the events that were leading up to his tragic death in 1980. It does it in a very um, professional way. It's a very entertaining read. Uh, there are a lot of things that I didn't know about John Lennon that I learned from reading this book. And if you are a big John Lennon fan, I would highly recommend that you pick this book up. It's not a very long read uh, and it keeps you engaged throughout. Uh, it's a, a great um kind of way to, again, commemorate the life of John Lennon and also uh, the unfortunate anniversary of his death. The next book that I want to talk about is the James Patterson book. Now, this book, by contrast, uh, it bills itself as a true crime novel. And what you need to know going into it, number one, is that James Patterson, whoever is writing this book, whether it's Casey Sherman, Dave Wedge, or James Patterson, they take the perspective of trying to get into Mark Chapman's mind. Um, it's almost told from a first person perspective. Uh, they make a lot of presumptions, I think, about what was going through David Chapman's, Mark David Chapman's mind. And I guess one of the things that has to be said is I don't think Mark Chapman needs any more recognition than he's already received, which has been too much already. And I don't like the fact that they spend so much time trying to get into his head and what his thoughts were. And it really gets to the point where it's offensive because the tone that is taken when they present the Mark David Chapman excerpts are, it's very sanctimonious. Uh, it's very self-righteous. And it really is offensive on very many levels. Basically, the book, it's not truly the last days of John Lennon. It's a complete history of John Lennon. And there are some historical inaccuracies. Number one, it talks about the quarry men playing at the Cavern Club. The quarry men never played the Cavern Club. That was one of the first inaccuracies right off the bat that, um, you know, I started thinking... Uh, I'm not sure this book is going to be really a, a great read. Um, but what it does is it takes um, the events two days prior to uh, Mark Chapman assassinating John Lennon, where Mark arrives in New York City, and he's kind of staking out the Dakota, waiting for John Lennon to arrive home. And in between, there are chapters about the life of John Lennon, um, the history of the Beatles, the breakup of the Beatles, John's solo work. And in between all those chapters are like many chapters talking about Mark Chapman hanging around the Dakota and what was going through his mind at the time. And again, they take a lot of liberties. They're actually trying to persuade you that these are what his thoughts were. And at no point is there any judgment made about the fact that this guy... Uh, is one of the worst human beings uh, to ever walk the face of the earth. I think they almost give his perspective as what he was thinking almost as justification for what happened. Um, so I really, I don't care for this book much at all. It gives way too much attention to Mark Chapman. It presumes a lot of what he was thinking, and yet, again, it gives him a lot of self-righteous justification because in his mind, John Lennon was a phony. John Lennon betrayed his fans. John Lennon really wasn't about peace and love. He was a fake. Um, and again, there are a lot of historical inaccuracies, dates, 
things in this book that having read a lot of John Lennon books, I know um, were either mistakes or lazy research. I'm not sure what it was. So I would honestly stay away from this book. I am a big fan and I like to read up on everything John Lennon. I'm actually sorry that I asked for this book for Christmas. I did get it for Christmas and having read through it, um, I would not encourage anybody to buy this book. Um, there are much better books if you're interested in the life of John Lennon, and I don't think anybody should be interested in anything related to Mark David Chapman's thoughts or motivations. He should just rot in prison for the rest of his life. So um, this is basically, it's a long read. Um, there are some photographs, nothing that you probably couldn't find anywhere else in another Beatles book or John Lennon book. So of the two books, I would definitely recommend this one. There are photographs in here as well uh, of John Lennon during his last years. It's got a map of the Dakota building. There's pictures of John during the last year of his life. I only wish this had come out in hardcover, but I don't believe it did. But nonetheless, this is a much more worthwhile read. So this would be the one to pick. This would be the one to stay away from. All right. Thanks for watching.